Hi, I'm Dave Wedzik, and I'm here today with Eric Barzeski, and we want to talk a little bit about the Pure Strike Five Simple Keys system, and more specifically, key number two, which is weight forward at impact. So we're going to be going over the swings of two very high-level players, Suzanne Pedersen and Grant Waite, and I'd like to start by, we'll take a look at what these two players look like as measured by the Swing Catalyst Pressure Plate System at impact. So we're looking at Suzanne Pedersen here on the screen, and you can see as Eric circles the 77% number, basically what that's showing you is that 77% of the weight, or in this dynamic system, the pressure, as measured by Swing Catalyst, is under Suzanne's forward leg at impact in this picture. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and take a quick look at Grant Waite, and you're going to see a number that looks quite a bit higher, and that's 91% uh, under Grant's left or forward leg, again, at impact. Okay, so that's, that's a very telling thing there, because we are talking about, when we talk about key number two, the weight as it, as it is uh, measured at the impact position. Okay, now, all that said, what is going on with the weight during the rest of the golf swing? Uh, and even more specifically, during the rest of the golf swing in a motion with what we would call key number one, steady head in place. So without, without big movements of the uh, upper body to and fro. So we're going to take a look at Suzanne Pedersen here first. And we're going to point out some areas on the screen so everybody's got a good understanding of what we're looking at. So over on the right side of the screen, as Eric's starting to uh, circle some of these numbers, we're looking at basically the pressure under Suzanne's left and right foot you can see here at address, you've got 59% left, 41% <clears throat> on the right. You can also notice by the coloration of those feet, you'll be able to tell where the pressure is underneath the feet themselves, whether it's you know more toe-oriented or more heel-oriented. In between the feet, you're going to see a white line with a what looks like, I'll call this a ball, a white ball. And that ball or point is going to move around throughout the swing. And that's just essentially marking the center of pressure as it moves throughout the golf swing. The white line that's there, we'd call that a trace. And that essentially, again, that's showing where that center of pressure is moving throughout the swing. So you can see, you know, it moved. You're going to see as we go through this, it moves slightly back to the right, then moves forward from there. Okay. So now on the left side of the screen, that is nothing more than what it looks like. That's the video that's going to be on the screen at the same time these pressure numbers are being shown. And it's important because <clears throat> without the video in place, we don't know what part of the swing we're looking at as, as each, you know, whether it's a backswing or, or downswing or top of the backswing. And we need to know, we need to see that video so that we know, again, what part of the swing we're talking about. At the very bottom of the screen is a very key thing that Eric's marking here. These are three little orange arrows. In working with this system and with any balance or force plate system, pressure plates, you've got to have the video synchronized to the pressure plate data or the data that's coming out. These orange arrows are points that we are able, you're able to mark, and they're going to denote the start of the swing, the top of the backswing, and impact. That allows the video to be properly synchronized to the pressure plate data that we're seeing. Okay, and I want you to note here too that we're I'm start we're starting to say pressure, and again we're talking about a dynamic system. If we were sitting static, if we were looking at Suzanne just there at a dress, we could easily call that weight because she's not moving. But as soon as the player starts moving around during this swing, we're going to be measuring pressure and not actual static weight. Okay, so. Again, let's, we're going to talk about what these players are doing throughout the swing, and we're going to, I'd like to mention there's going to be four parts we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the backswing, we're going to talk about transition, we're going to talk about the downswing coming into impact, right? And then, the, and then and that would include a little bit of the follow-through, so downswing, impact, follow-through, and then we're going to talk about the finish. We'll point each of these out in Suzanne's swing. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. <clears throat> You can see at address, again, 59% on the forward leg or her left leg, 41% right. As we go ahead and run the backswing, we'll do this pretty slowly, you're going to notice that as her trail leg starts losing flex, 
it's going to, you're, she's actually going to be increasing pressure under the right leg. Now she's not moving evidently to the right hardly at all. In fact, her head is staying very steady. She's rotating it a little bit, but this is a very centered pivot. And already, by the time her left arm is parallel to the ground during the backswing, she's reached 66% under her right leg. Okay, we're going to, we'll keep this going here. And we're going to talk about how, how it looks as we start to reach the top of the backswing. And it's going to be just before transition. We'll notice that she reaches all the way to 71% under her right foot. Okay, so this is interesting in that we know the weight is going to be, well, the pressure is going to be moving forward fast all the way to impact, and that's what a great player does. We know that it reaches forward at impact, but the pressure is very much built up under her right leg as her right leg loses flex during the backswing. So now that she's reached the top, it's going to, again, it's settled just briefly, and we're going to take taking a look at transition here. As Suzanne sort of moves down into transition, it starts to, it's not moving extremely fast at the first part of transition, but now you start to see very quickly, you're going to notice how during that entire downswing, and I'm going to have Eric pull that back, here's this little bit of transition, it's kind of settling, and then very quickly, it's going to flash forward from the point where her left arm gets about parallel to the ground all the way down to impact. It's moving forward extremely, extremely fast. So go, it went, you know, it goes from uh, where it was 71% right, it settles in transition, it starts to get, you know, back closer to 50-50 there for a second, and then from there it is flashing. It's going forward, this is a very dynamic portion of the swing, it is going forward extremely fast and reaching, you know, 77% uh, there about, yeah, 77% at impact, and then continuing forward all the way up to uh, 90% here into the, into the sort of the middle of her follow-through. And then you'll notice, we'll just call this sort of the, you know, finish position. She's just going to kind of, you know, balance out pressure sitting under her left leg. This is where she's settling into the follow through a little bit. And she's going to see numbers that, you know, kind of wiggle between 95 and 98%. Now, as she's doing this, take note of the white ball <clears throat> as part of Suzanne's trace up in the top right. There's this is the point in the golf swing where there's very little movement. And Eric's, you know, moving the video here. And there's very little movement in that center of pressure. It's, again, this is a settling point of the swing. Whereas, as an example, as, you know, we talked about, there, there's very little movement there. But if we watch that white ball move during that downswing and all the way down an impact, it's moving extremely fast. There's a lot of movement. This is very typical. And it's something we see in all the high-level players that we've looked at. So... That's uh, very good to know there how that center of pressure can either be moving very quickly during the downswing and rapidly forward or just kind of, you know, it almost appears to be wiggling around and kind of settling there. So we'll go ahead and take a look at Grant Waite. And uh, we've, we've got to spend quite a bit of time with Grant and, you know, filmed these swings recently. And it was, it was really fun to do this because Grant's a great player, great ball striker. And, uh, you know, we certainly value this information we're getting and looking at in a, in a player of Grant's, Grant's level. Um, as Grant, go ahead, if we look at Grant from address here, at address, we're looking at 63% under his left foot, 37% are under his right foot. Now, interestingly enough, Grant says he feels like this is about 50-50, but he's still setting up with most of his weight uh, under the forward leg. As we start to take this, move this swing, and we start to run the video, you're going to notice something very similar to what we saw in Suzanne's swing. The pressure starts transferring under the right leg. Again, the right leg is decreasing flex. As it's decreasing flex, it's pushing downward. Okay, and that's where the that's that's how that's happening. So as as the leg is decreasing flex, he's adding pressure into the ground to decrease the flex. The other leg, the left leg in this case, is releasing the pressure again as it's increasing its flex. Okay, you're going to notice here again we're starting to see very similar numbers to Suzanne's swing. Centered pivot, steady head. The right leg is building up the pressure during the backswing. Okay, you can see it at 60. Was it 64, 65 percent? Now he's starting to get to complete the backswing, and we're going to reach a number that's. Uh, again, 60% on the right leg, 40% on the left leg. As Grant starts to go into transition now, we're going to notice these things 
start to change and we're going to see some transfers back to the left just briefly but if you take a good look at that number under the R you're going to see that that is sort of again it's not flashing forward yet there's almost a settling here as he begins to sort of squeeze or settle into the ground and he's almost added a tiny bit of pressure back under his right leg before he starts forward this is key because as he starts the transfer forwards here it's going to be going very quickly and flashing forward again so now as we get just past transition transition and start into the downswing you're going to notice this huge pressure flash forward all the way down to impact and he reaches it was approximately 91 92 percent that high of a number at impact and then it's going to continue on into the early part of the follow-through, still increasing all the way to 97%. And then now take a look. He's going to reach, you know, what, what I would say is his finished position. And you're going to notice again a couple things. The under the left foot, the pressure is sitting there at 94, 96, 95, 97, 98. And the little white ball in the upper right is just in its settling phase. It's just kind of hanging around there. Again, this is this is a great player just sort of settling in to their finish. Okay, We're going to pull back and take a look again at how quickly that white ball marking the center of pressure moves forward doing, during that downswing. Again, that's the most dynamic portion of the swing. It's moving very quickly from the point where his left arm reaches parallel to the ground all the way into impact and just into the early part of the follow through. And that is important to note because the traces of these top level players are very much like fingerprints and even among some of the poorest players they're very much like fingerprints uh, especially with these top players you're not going to notice big variances uh, when they're making swings these pressure traces look very similar uh, in the time we spent with Grant he had a number of different four irons for us and they don't vary by you know more than one two percent uh, from swing to swing. Uh, the question comes up, well, how can that be? These are just golfers. They're not machines. Uh, I can tell you they're very machine-like in this way. So you can expect these traces to be you know, very similar amongst top players. Uh, and to that point, uh, we've done some studies and spent some time also with the SAM Balance Lab, and we see much of the same kind of data. It's not like it's varying from machine to machine either uh, when whether whichever machine we're used from time to time again you're gonna see very very similar output uh, if we put the same player on each machine so how do we explain this picture which is an export that we did recently from the SAM balance lab and when you look at this closely you're gonna see that I've actually made a backswing where I've sort of shifted right or loaded right uh, almost in you know quote unquote got well behind the ball yet if you look down below you're gonna notice that 79 percent of the pressure is being recorded as under the left foot with only 21 percent on the right and then you'll also notice that according to this pressure trace at this point in the swing 95 percent uh, of the pressure uh, is under my right toes um, you know so something something is amiss here we're going to take a look we so then we decided we'd have a little bit of fun we got another export picture here and in this one you can clearly see that I have my left foot up in the air off the ground completely yet the pressure plate is measuring 66 percent under the left foot 34% under the right foot. Yet again, my left foot is completely off the ground. If you look over to the left, you can notice that even with my left foot completely off the ground, both feet are clearly shown as having pressure underneath them with more under the left. So do you remember those orange triangles that we talked to you about that were important as part of the swing catalyst system when it comes to synchronizing the video to the pressure plate data? Uh, the SAM Balance Lab uses a very similar uh, thing and it's very important that these that the video is synced to the pressure plate data so what we've got here is a situation where the video is not properly synced and that's what we were showing you in those two pictures we just looked at uh, you'll notice here as we look at video on the right and pressure trace on the left that 
we're going to go through the four different phases of the swing and we'll kind of notice some things happening that really shouldn't be happening if this was if this was synced properly. So as the as the backswing starts, you're going to notice the, the little bit of almost movement to the right where this would be kind of a almost looks like it's settling though. And then as the backswing is completing and we're starting to get close to transition, we're going to see a very fast flash of that white ball or that center of pressure forward during what appears on the video to be the completion of the backswing. So as we had talked about before when we showed the swings of Suzanne and Grant, uh, this is what we're seeing on the trace is a very dynamic portion of the swing, but yet we're seeing a very, you know, quote unquote, non-dynamic portion of the swing uh, here as the backswing is sort of completing and we're getting near transition. So we can see that the again the synchronization of the trace and the video is off, and that's what's that's what's causing the problems there. Uh, if we look a little more, as we go ahead and go into what at the point of the swing where I've kind of gotten through transition and I'm starting into my downswing, this is now where we should see the center of pressure flashing forward the fastest and everything really, boy, dynamically just going really, really fast towards that forward uh, foot. And you're going to notice that it's not at all. This is where, this is, you'll see that center pressure and it's essentially just saying, hey, I'm done. I'm just settling here. I'm just kind of hanging out. You'll also notice, as Eric just pointed out, uh, the pressure under the right foot is very much up in the toes. Point being, even though the video shows me in the downswing at this point, the pressure trace is telling us something totally different. This is actually the point in the swing where we're pretty much reached finish. It's, it's settling. It's getting, you know, it's just kind of me just, again, gaining, regaining my balance and sitting there. Again, I use the term hanging out, but this is just where that center of pressure is doing very little into the finish of the swing. So, uh, it's very, very important that you understand that when you're looking at data from either of these pressure plate systems or any ones on the market, you cannot trust the data you're seeing unless you can be certain that the plate in the video was synchronized properly.